This is going to be a uh, video number seven in the series of tutorials for our uh, Panic at the Disco app. By the end of the previous part, part six, I believe we got to step 50 in the guide where we played. We see five speakers instantiated and they're all children of, uh, actually grandchildren of the speaker mega parent, which is an object that we created so we can do scaling and treat the whole thing as one. Inside of that is the object that has a script, which is the instantiator. We're telling it how many objects to instantiate at what radius. An offset is how much to rotate the parent because the parent is the speaker mega parent. So that means that of course the music will start playing but also that five speakers would be instantiated. Um, the next step, step 51, is to duplicate the speaker mega parent 1 and to call it speaker mega parent 2. So the mega parent 1 duplicate, and instead of 1, parentheses 1, we'll simply call it Two. Here's the idea. Speaker Mega Parent 2 is going to have another five speakers sitting in the gaps between the five speakers from Mega Parent 1. Um, then change the name of its child to Speaker Instantiator 2. So if it's Speaker Mega Parent 2, it should have a Speaker Instantiator 2. And let's see what we're changing about it. Speaker Instantiated 2 is going to work exactly the same as Speaker Instantiator 1, except its parameters will be different. What will it use? It's going to use Speaker Manager 2 to remind you, instead of Speaker Manager 1, which I can, you know, I can find it here or I can drag it from um, the prefabs, Speaker Manager 2 is a different speaker as, as far as colors, the colors of the light. It just looks different from Speaker Manager. It's a different speaker. Um, the parent will be Mega Parent 2, so Speaker Manager 2 and Speaker Me Mega Parent 2. I'm still using the number of objects as five. I'm still using the radius as five, but look at the offset. 36. Where did that 36 come from? It's 36 degrees. What I'm thinking is, if there's going to be overall 10 speakers, five by Mega Parent 1 and five by Mega Parent 2, 10 speakers means that my 360 degrees, each speaker will occupy a tenth of that. A tenth of 360 is 36. So if two is offset by 36 degrees from one, this one is offset zero. This one is offset 36. It means that it will occupy exactly the number of, you know, the, the, the slice in between them. Let's see if that works. I'm going to play and I expect 10 speakers and each odd or even one, we could already even see it in the camera. These are the mega parent one and these are the mega parent two. Once I've done that, I can play all kinds of games. I can go, for instance, to Speaker Instantiator 2 and tell it that I want the radius to be not 5, but let's say um, something a little smaller, like 4. It will create like an inner little circle, which will look something like this. See how each one of them is pushed in a little bit. Um, or... I can play with it in different ways. Let's return it to a radius of five. And what if I want the speaker instantiator one not to make five objects, but to make uh, 10 objects? And also this one to make 10 objects. So the, uh, the total is 20. And if the total is 20, 360 degrees divided by 20 is only 18 degrees. For each one of them. So the offset of the second one will be 18 degrees. This will instantiate 20 speakers in a pretty nice uh, circle. Because they're big, they're kind of overlapping, but this might be kind of cool. I can actually take the speaker instantiator 2 and tell it to do a slightly smaller radius, like 4.5, so that way they don't overlap. One of them is a slight, see, like big, small, big, small, big, small. Once I have two of them, I have so many things I can do. Let me return to the original numbers. Five objects and zero for Speak Instantiator 1. Five objects, five radius, and 36 degrees for Speaker Instantiator 2. 
So we just got to step 52, where we see 10 speakers alternating if worked. It's time to create the top lighting, like the lighting of our whole, like, you know, um, dance hall. Um, we're going to create an empty object called top light parent. You, you see that we are using the same strategy over and over of creating parents and inside of them children that we can control with scripts. So empty parent, top light parent. Uh, reset transform. See how we cannot take that for granted. Um, find cookie one and cookie two in the teacher assets and in their inspectors, don't forget to set. Now, what are cookies? This is a good time to start to talk about cookies. Cookies are um, like uh, silhouettes that we can add, filters basically, that we can add to lights for the light to shine through. Just think of the most common example in uh, popular culture, which is uh, the bat signal. The bat signal is a spotlight, but it has a cookie that it uh, cuts through, that it uh, shines through in the shape of the bat, uh, you know, uh, logo. Um, so we already have two cookies. What I'm going to do is show you how to use them, but also let's create a short tutorial on how to create our own cookies. So the cookies are found in um, the teacher's assets. Let's see, um, teacher textures here it is notice how they have a different icon from different uh, from regular textures why if i look at cookie one see how the texture type is defined as cookie the the default is simply default so if we compare we need to make sure that not only it's used as a cookie but also that the mapping is called mirror ball and also that it's made for a point light because this is what we're going to be using it for the cookies behave different whether we add them to a point light or to a spotlight or to a um, to a directional light and we will go over that in class and the other um, very important uh, parameter is alpha source from grayscale because the whole point of a cookie is that it's really a black and white image. You see it has a very nice intricate pattern, but it's a black and white image where anything that is closer to white light will go through and anything is closer to black, it won't. It's very sim similar to the concept of a mask in Photoshop and actually they are created in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to Photoshop for a second and I'm going to um, create a new cookie. Um, I can see that the size of this, this cookie is 1024 by 1024 and this looks good to me. So here's what I'm going to do just to show you what a cookie could look like. I'm going to Photoshop. I'm creating a file new. I'm giving it a nice, it is recommended that you use for width and height um, powers of two. So width 1024, 10, 24. Um, the resolution doesn't matter. Uh, RGB color. And let's make the background black. And I'm going to uh, create that. In other words, at first, no light will go through this. It's like totally, you know, opaque. Let me go and save it. I can save it as a Photoshop file. And I'm going to call it, call it cookie three. Let's see if I'm doing it in, not in the development, but in the one I'm doing right now for vid assets, uh, teacher textures already have cookie one and cookie two. I'm going to call it cookie three. What do I need to turn it into a cookie? I need some things that are white. For instance, I can take my uh, brush. It doesn't matter what color you color with because it's going to be looking at lightness, not at color. So you might as well use, you know, uh, grayscale. Uh, I'm going to be using my, um, you know, right click to make this brush wider. I can make it hard or soft. Right now it's just a soft brush. So I can do little, you know, things like that and this I can bring in other designs I can even if I undo if I use this color I can use some of the special shapes 
custom shape tool let's see what i got uh flowers that come with photoshop so let's say i want a cookie in the shape of this nice flower and i'm applying it i don't need the other one um and i'm saving now it could be uh fully white if it's by the way if it's 50 percent gray then 50 percent of the light will go through it so what i can do for instance to embellish on it is take my paintbrush change the color to something like you know that's 50 percent gray uh go back to a regular layer where i can draw make it make the brush very very soft and draw little gray dots and these you know the less white the less light let's save that now as i go back to unity i will see cookie three but it looks like a regular image what do i need to actually make unity use it as a cookie just what we did to cookie one and two i'm going to go to cookie three i'm going to change the texture type from default to cookie i'm going to say for instance that i want to use it for a point light because it maps it totally different for point lights for spotlights and so on uh, i'm going to make sure that the alpha source is from grayscale and then very important that it says that in the uh, in the guide to click apply otherwise all of that is not being really applied and um let's see if i actually said that right here don't forget to click apply now i got a cookie i can test so before we actually create our real lights let's create you know a, um, a point light that we can test i'm going to create a light i'm going to create it as a point light i'm going to bring it up in the air so it, you know it, it, you see how it shines on the um on the floor it's about let's say about two meters in the air Right now, its color is white. Now, how do I assign a cookie to it? Right here. Texture. I'm going to say, hey, you are going to be using cookie three. And, of course, I'm going to change to important. And you see, as soon as I change to important, the light is going only through cookie three. Now, the beautiful thing about this is if I had um, not just uh, you know a floor, but let's actually create a cube in front of us. It's going to be like a front wall again, just temporarily. A cube, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to make it wide and i'm also going to make it very tall so there's a wall now you see how the cookie because a point light is a light think of a point light as a light bulb and a light bulb if we have just a light bulb it doesn't matter in what direction it rotates right it's always going to look like it's illuminating a room but what if we put that light bulb inside like lace or inside a mask then the rotation will start mattering very much so for instance if i start rotating this light i get something pretty interesting i can rotate it in any direction that i want now finally rotation starts making a difference in point lights until now it didn't because regular point lights without a cookie simply look like they're illuminating a whole room i'm going to delete this point light and delete this cube and in the next tutorial we're going to create our real lights that are going to be using cookie one and cookie two